What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trash or Pass. That is right. We're doing another one. I'm just banging them out tonight. That's what I'm trying to do is just, just bang them. <clears throat> bang them out tonight. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Alex. I'm Oklahoma's Horst Angler, and this is Trash or Pass. And what Trash or Pass is, it is literally just my opinion of a bait, a bait that I have taken out, that I have fished, that I have, you know, become accustomed to or acquainted with or just learned. And I give you guys my opinion, my feedback, and what I know about these baits. And as you guys saw by the thumbnail and the title, and like I told you last week when we did the Explorer Gill right there, the old Explorer Gill. If you guys didn't see that, I'll leave a link for you up in the up on the screen or down in the description if I can remember. But yeah, anyway, so today we're doing the Spro Chad Chad. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh! It's a whale! 9-11. Oh yeah, oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Huh? This swim bait, I feel, I just took the fishing world by storm. One of the most anticipated swim baits to hit the market. Now, anybody that is not familiar with swim baits, why? Why was this thing so hard to get? Why was it in such high demand? Why were my local tackle shops carrying it? Why was Tackle Warehouse always sold out of it? This is like... It's, it's one of the legends in the swim bait world, in my opinion. KGB, who makes the original Chad Chad, no longer making the Chad Chad, um, really just made this bait as famous as it is and made it for what it is. Now, why, if you go and find a Chad Chad, why do you see some that are a KGB Chad Chad and they're, you know, 160, 170 bucks, whereas the Spro Chad Chad is 70 65 70 something like that yeah like 70 70 bucks either way why why is that this is plastic it is an abs mold it is plastic the original chad chads are an actual resin they are a handmade bait and that's the reason why but let's let's move forward okay kgb Chad Chad, it, just, it made it what it is, made it as famous as it is, and made it one of the reasons why these are so hard, or they were so hard to get a hold of. Now, what we've got on here with the Chad Chad, we've got swiveling hook hangers, we've got a direct line tie. I would definitely recommend you use a snap or split rings. You're going to get more action out of your bait if you put a snap or split ring on there instead of direct tying to the line tie. You don't want to do that. You do not want to do a direct line tie. That is, again, just my opinion. It's what I say. That's what I think. That's how I feel. So I just, from me fishing them as a direct tie to that or fishing with a snap or split rings, you're going to get more action out of this bait. You're going to get more reaction, more bites, more fish landed. So Let's talk about this bait. It is a slow sinking bait. I've got a couple of them here. This is actually a custom painted one that I got from uh, Tulsa Tackle and Outdoors. I don't remember the painter's name. I feel like I've asked them every time I've gone in there because I've gotten a ton of compliments on this paint right here. I believe his name is Mark, but this paint is solid. And you can see it's a little chewed up. It's got a little bit of rash on it. And uh, that's the one I've been fishing the most lately. So, the bone as well, solid one, and then I have a uh, gizzard, no, I have a I have a thread fin, a thread fin around here somewhere, but as far as colors go, if you go just directly out of the, you know, out of the package, personally, I think the bone is hard to beat. I think the bone is just the way to go, and yeah, that's, that's what I think, but if you can get them painted, if you can get a custom paint, I definitely recommend that too. I think it just, you know, it, it just adds to 
it adds to the bait. It just makes it, I don't know, look even better than it actually, than it already is. Not actually is, but already is. I mean, look at the purple shift to the green on the back of this. A little bit of green on the tail there. Uh, it's just, it's a solid, solid paint job. Okay, anyways. Like I said, I don't know the guy's name, but we've got swiveling hook hangers. I think I covered that already, and uh, I covered swiveling hook hangers in the last one about the Bait Sandy Explorer Gill, but I'll cover just really quick. What swiveling hook hangers do and how they benefit you is it allows that fish to not gain leverage on the bait when it is thrashing and trying to shake that bait loose. Um, the hook that comes on the Spro, I don't know. Um, they've been good to me. It's not an EWG. It is a straight shank. I don't, like I said, I don't know if they're owners or what it may be, but, um, the setup that I would throw that on is going to be very similar to the Explorer Gill 710, 76 medium heavy ghost code, the moderate fast. These are rated one to four ounces. Um, the Chad Chad being right around two ounces, you could get away with throwing that on like, you know, a heavy flipping stick. Um, those hooks are a little bit more stout than what comes on the Explorer Gill. So I think that like a heavy flipping stick could handle that a little bit better, but I do have the swim bait setups and the line that I'm throwing that on, same thing. I mean like no more than 20 pound. I'm throwing it on between 18 to 16 pound is what I'm going to be throwing them on. And then the snap that I prefer, I don't think I covered this when I talked about the Explorer Gill, but I really prefer to use, let me see if we can get this in focus here. That's the owner hyperwire, or hyper, I don't remember what it is. It's the owner's, it's, it's owner, okay? It's a welded snap. It's the one that I've used on all my swim baits since I found them. And they're extremely strong. They're lightweight. The nice thing about them being lightweight is I don't feel like it really weighs down the bait it doesn't compromise the swim of that bait and then i'm going to be throwing them on a 200 to 300 size reel as you guys should know by now this is my okuma komodo this is my og i've had this reel for i feel like three years now and it's been an absolute tank and absolutely love it so with the old uh gomexis cork cork knobs on there but i would not go over 20 pound when throwing the Chad Shad. Now, what I love about the Chad Shad is it is a very choppy bait. Talking about the angle of the dangle, the angle of the hinge on that bait. This is not one that is really known for being a wide glide. Let me, you know what, let's just take, let's take the old Depths 250 here, okay? So, when we hold these up next to each other, see if you guys can, see if we can get that to, Focus on that, okay? You see the angle difference in the hinge right here? The Depths 250 does not have a lot of movement. When you're looking at that, that travel right there, this is one of the widest gliding baits that are out there. These are extremely wide, not really meant to be chopped, okay? The Chad Shad, however, a lot of travel right there. A lot of travel, which means it's not going to glide as wide. It's gonna be tight. It's going to be choppy. It's going to be playful, as Steve, the OK Fisherman, would say. But I really like that, especially around this time of year when the fish are feeding up on shad. And you can just really get that good reaction bite. That is, that's huge, you know. And I think when, around this time of year, when you're getting that reaction bite, the wide glides definitely come into play, for sure. But I think when you're just talking about just going out and just catching, I think these choppier style glides are hard to beat. And again, when we're talking about the legendary Chad Chad now being, you know, just mass produced by Spro, and I think Spro nailed it because I know they had KGB actually, you know, work with them and give them the actual schematics and everything. But this is just, it's hard to beat. I mean, it's its a fantastic bait. Now, one thing about this bait and how it is designed is this is meant to be a slow sink and it does get down faster the more erratic that you work it. So, what I'm talking about is making those 
long casts, making those long casts and just immediately working that bait to get it down to depth and then it will start to continue to slow sink. Now, if you make a long cast and you're working it slow, it's going to take slower to get down that water column. So keep that in mind. You know, if you have forward facing sonar or if you don't and you just know the depth and you know the depth of where the bait is at, take that into account, okay? Forward facing sonar is great because that's when you're really able to see how that bait is working, how fast it will get down to depth whether you're working it quick or working it slow, how fast it will sink, how fast it will, you know, slow float in, you know, some cases, obviously not the case of the Spro Chad Shad, but I have caught a few fish on the Chad Shad. Um, I'm going to roll whatever I've got. I know I've got one, one cast to catch on there, and I might have another one, but I mean, I no promises, because right now, I'm just, I'm shooting these and I have no idea what all I have saved up. So we're going to show you at least one. <laughs> I miss you all day. <laughs> well, you said Russell. Oh, I watched him eat it. That was sick. Oh, that was sick. Wow. Yeah. I was just over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, finally. <laughs> now, what I had done on that cast in particular is working it along a grass line and working it on a hard grass line. I had made as best a parallel cast as I could in what I was doing because we were moving forward is I was just slow working that thing. Because as we're moving forward, this thing is just moving, just kind of meandering, just nice, you know, meandering, slow swim. And then when I'm working it and twitching it, it's chopping, chopping hard to the left and to the right. And then also doing, you know, slow turns to kind of get it to just get closer to the grass, but that's besides the point. That fish in particular on this one was sick because I did see it eat. I could see the bait. It was, you know, maybe a foot or two down in the water column, and I saw that fish just come up and just smash it, and it was awesome. So... I love the Chad Chad. I think it's great. I think it is another one of those baits that is really good for the beginner swim bait guys. Um, the only reason that I would not recommend it is if you're on the bank because it is a slow sink. And it's tough if you're going to be snagging up, you know, a $70 swim bait from the bank where you have no way to get it back. So, you know, but I mean, money's already spent. What are you going to do about it? You know, so that's, that's me. That's me personally. But Spro Chad Chad, awesome bait, 100% pass. I just, I think it's great. And again, I think it's just one of those baits that is great for any, anyone wanting to get into swim baits, beginner swim baits, glide baits, and kind of dive into that realm. But fair warning, it is a dark, dark hole. I mean, it's just like, it's a bottomless pit, and it's a money pit. So go spend some money on some swim baits. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you next time we're on the water. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. I swear to God.